Chapter 238 The divine tree felt its very essence transforming, from the inside out, down to the cellular level. The entire tree emanated an increasingly intense dark aura, interspersed with crackling purple lightning. Surprisingly, it didn't seem as painful as expected. The divine tree merely squinted and furrowed its brow, as if processing an overwhelming influx of information flooding its mind. The female system voice calmly said, Now that you know everything about the darkness, what do you plan to do? With a resolute expression, the divine tree declared loudly, I will defeat it, and then I will save it. The system fell silent, not expecting the divine tree to express a desire to save the former darkness. Noticing the system's reaction, the divine tree asked, It's time you tell me who you are. As it spoke, the dark aura continued to surge around the core of the tree. The system responded, and a transformation began on the system panel. Green smoke enveloped the panel, hinting at an impending metamorphosis. From the green smoke, a girl emerged. She was tall, with perfect proportions, her skin as white as snow, and a delicate face as radiant as the full moon. The divine tree was taken aback, never expecting the system it had cursed thousands of times to be such a beautiful girl. The surprising twist was that this girl was none other than Lingling, a character from the Dark King's story. No wonder the Dark King was so determined not to leave, for she was an unparalleled beauty. However, Lingling, at this moment, was merely a vivid 3D projection, with digital glows constantly flowing through her form. She was still dressed in her ancient red gown, calmly gazing at the divine tree. She softly spoke, Now, do you understand everything? The divine tree certainly understood now. Everything had become crystal clear. Simultaneously, the space around them began to brighten, initiating the process of dissipating lingling space and returning to the present. The last words the divine tree uttered were, Now, I will settle the thousand-year-old grudge. Inside the living space of the divine tree, three individuals were still residing, or rather, they were being held captive. Xiao Ling's fists pounded relentlessly against the spatial barrier confining them, but no matter how hard she struck, even until her flesh was torn, she could not break through. At that moment, Xiao Ling sensed that her master's life force had been drained to the extreme, and there were no signs of life left. She fell to the ground in despair. Meanwhile, the mermaid queen stood behind her, saying, Stop your futile efforts, your master is dead. However, this time, her tone lacked the usual mockery. After all, she too was a living being with emotions, and in front of a despairing girl, she couldn't bring herself to add fuel to the fire. The mermaid queen believed that both she, Xiao Ling, and the dying dragon would perish there. She added, Soon, this space will contract to its minimum, and we will all die here. Xiao Ling paid no heed to these words. She sobbed, calling out her master's name, unable to believe she couldn't be by his side in his final moments. Just then, the space trembled slightly. A powerful golden spiritual force surged from below, expanding the space as if it was being resurrected. Xiao Ling and the Mermaid Queen were stunned, having never felt such abundant life force before. Suddenly, a thought struck Xiao Ling. Could her master have been resurrected? The Mermaid Queen was equally shocked. For such a sudden resurgence of life force, there could only be one reason. Back in the present, the Dark King shouted, You see you? It's over. A terrifying burst of spiritual energy shot through the core of the divine tree, disintegrating everything in its path. The core of the divine tree seemed unlikely to withstand this blow, and its spiritual energy had almost entirely dissipated. But something was amiss. The Dark King noticed an extraordinary spiritual energy rapidly growing at an astonishing rate. Though different from the divine tree's usual aura, it was undeniably emanating from its core. The Dark King was taken aback, seeing that not only had the Divine Tree's core not disintegrated, but nine dark roots had emerged from it, radiating a blindingly brilliant white-purple light. Shocked to the point of stuttering, the Dark King muttered, What? What form is this? The familiar sensation puzzled him, leaving him momentarily unable to comprehend the situation. The roots of the Divine Tree struck the ground forcefully, beginning to adjust its stance. 
Yule and the Holy Sun were terrified, witnessing the space around them glitching continuously, and the sheer power of this spiritual energy made their hearts drop to their stomachs. Yule could not believe it. Never before had he encountered such an overwhelmingly terrifying spiritual force, even stronger than that of the Dark King. Even the sea beasts, miles away, trembled in fear, completely immobilized. Those battling fiercely on the sea realized that the true hell was on the other side of the battlefield. At this moment, the divine tree was undergoing a transformation. Strange white and purple veins emerged on its body, intertwining with its already fortified wooden texture, exuding an aura of death. Even its third eye had changed to a white-purple hue, emitting a cold, radiant gaze, embodying the demeanor of a supreme being. The Dark King, now devoid of any doubt, recognized this power as the same dark force he wielded. Stunned, he asked the Divine Tree, How did you acquire this power? What have you done? The Divine Tree, expressionless and indifferent, replied, To defeat you, I returned from hell. The Dark King was taken aback, perhaps interpreting the statement literally. From this angle, we could see the entire body of the Divine Tree, an imposing figure marked with distinctive white and purple patterns. However, it still retained its green branches as hair, and the general shape of its body remained unchanged, indicating that only the inherent nature of its power had transformed. The Divine Tree called out the Dark King's name, Darkness, but then corrected itself, No, I should call you Little Dark. At these words, the Dark King was shocked, his eyes wide with disbelief. No one had called him by that name for thousands of years, and only one person knew it. In a panic, he shouted, How do you know that name? The Divine Tree replied, There are many things you do not know, before lifting its foot and launching into battle. The Dark King wasted no time, immediately sending out his tendrils, cursing angrily, Damn it! How dare you mimic my words! But as the tendrils neared the Divine Tree, it swung its arm, and the space seemed to be sliced apart. The tendrils were severed, and this absolute power took the Dark King by surprise. The invisible force struck the Dark King's massive body, sending him flying into the air, with fresh blood spurting from his mouth. Damn it, he thought, he couldn't even discern the nature of this power. Was it spatial manipulation? The Divine Tree's footsteps shattered the ground beneath it as it declared that it would not allow the Dark King to achieve his goals. With a swift snap of its fingers, dark spiritual energy spread out, rapidly enveloping the battlefield. Wherever this barrier reached, it transported everything within to another dimension. The speed was astounding, seemingly impossible to evade. Observing this spatial technique, the Dark King was astonished, realizing the Divine Tree had awakened an incredibly formidable power. Among all attributes, spatial manipulation was the most supreme. The Dark King found himself in a vast, cosmic expanse. The Divine Tree, aware that its opponent had figured it out, confirmed, yes, this is the freezing of space-time. Unlike the moment technique, it doesn't require spiritual energy. The Dark King, despite acknowledging the Divine Tree's new skill, believed it was merely buying time. He still didn't think his opponent could turn the tide. The Divine Tree, however, calmly stated, do you not realize you are sealed within frozen space-time? Here, there is neither life nor death, so you won't have any evolution points to buy new skills. The Dark King glared intensely before shouting, Do you think this will defeat me? Look, I have absorbed countless beasts. Even without evolution points, I can easily overpower you. He then unleashed the sound blade towards the Divine Tree. In its dinosaur version, this attack could obliterate a city block, and under the Dark King's current power, it could certainly demolish an entire mountain range. The Divine Tree, familiar with this move, crystallized its body into diamond form. The Dark King thought, this guy is just defending again. But to his surprise, the Divine Tree didn't just defend. It charged forward and punched him squarely in the face. The pain from this punch was excruciating, unlike anything he had felt from the Divine Tree before. End of chapter 238 Thank <laughs> you.